Uh, this one from Mark in Townsville. He says, Boz, yeah. is it fair to say that you and Man United's uh, iconic manager, Alex Ferguson, yes. had a testy relationship? Uh, yeah, towards the end, we did. But the bottom line is this. I, I wouldn't have had the career that I did unless he gave me my opportunity when I was mm. 16. Yep. Um, and, and as well, uh, you know, if I listened to my dad more, I, I would have yep. been uh, OK. He used to always say, number one, the rule number one, the boss is always right. Yep. Rule number Two, if the boss happens to be wrong, refer to rule number one. So, yeah, right. so there you go. And the boss is the boss. At the end can, of the day, that's can you, it. Um, tell me the story about where you basically almost got into a fight on the team bus. Well, yeah. <laughs> he was... Uh, Sir Alex was very good friends with um, uh, Tony Blair, who was then Prime Minister. And mm. we played against Sunderland. And, uh, and Tony Blair is actually up from, from that area, in the, the north of England. And he had spent a lot of time with Tony Blair at the end of that game. So uh, we're waiting for him to come back to play cards, and Roy, said, Roy Keener said, "Like, let's wind him up. How long? You know, if that was one of us, yeah. you know, he would have left and said, you know, get back on your own and all that." So he came back on the bus, and you know, Roy, Roy's just turned around and said, "Where you been?" And of course, you know, Sir Alex is going, "You know, I've, I've been with the Prime Minister." And I just turned around and said to him, oh, yeah, Prime Minister. I said, the proper Prime Minister he had was Margaret Thatcher. Oh, well. No. <laughs> well. I, like, I had Keno under the table. I think it was Dennis Irwin. You know, you're kicking me under the table. Like, as I say, pull back for the next half an hour of the trip. I, like, he nearly dropped me off anyway. So yeah, I was like, right. okay. It was like, you know, it was like, it was yeah. the most tense game of cars that we had for, I think, <laughs> yeah. for the whole time that I was there. But basically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, set him off. Got a question here. Um, fella who's a, uh, a Champions League... Uh, sorry, Gabriel Battistuta fan. He said yes. that he scored one of the best Champions League goals against you at Old Trafford he one did. night. He Where did. does he rank as far as greatest strikers? Oh, he's, he's well up there. Yeah. Um, absolutely fantastic striker. Um, he lived in Australia, actually, for a, a, Perth, yeah, quite huh? some, in Perth for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, but he rocketed this one uh, past me at Old Trafford one night. That was one of them, Fletch, you know, you were talking about before, what happens when it moves out there. Oh, how it goes like that. it moved? It went straight. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> uh, from what, my what, perspective, what, like, oh, yes, <laughs> yes. From my perspective, you're right. If ever hits the straight now, I always think it's the goal who's always looking at myself first, but uh, yeah, he was sure wonderful. He's, he scored in the first league as well. well um, but he, he was a wonderful, with the wonderful boots? striker. Has the boots got anything to do with it? Because I don't know you're talking well, about... Yeah, boots. No, yeah, not as much. Yeah. Not as much. It's if you, if you hit the ball sweet enough, the, the thing inside it, whatever you call it, the bladder, bladder. that's it. If, if you hit it properly, kind of like when you punch somebody properly and it shakes inside of the brain, they fall over. Same when you strike a football. If you strike it properly, and that bladder moves, that's what moves the ball around. Ah, you learn it. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So you, uh, this one bladder moves sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> We're still so on air, boys. Kevin Broadbeach, she says, uh, Boz, yes. uh, you played with David Beckham. Yes. Were you good friends with him? I wouldn't say good friends, no. uh, but uh, like, I, I, was, I would say relatively close to him. Um, uh, he was a young kid as well when I was there as a young kid, but he was a, in a year or so behind. I mm. um, obviously saw him out here when he came to play for LA Galaxy against Newcastle. Yeah. So that was really, really good to see him. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't say really, really close. You, yeah. you guys know yourselves in the dressing room, um, there are people that, you know, say, like Dwight York, I was very close to because, you know, yeah. very, very similar sort of you know, experiences and the fact that we're both on our own. But a lot of but, good time as well. Yeah, but, you know, it's kind of like, if I asked you if you were close to one of your, you know, teammates in the dressing, you'd say yes, but not, yeah. not ridiculously so. But yeah, fantastic yeah. player, really yeah. fantastic player and fantastic guy. Uh, Matty, I've had one come into the prof's parcel box, just <laughs> <in> some <laughs> subsection. Um, it's from a young Johnny Clegg, Bozza. Yes. Uh, I have recently moved to Sydney from Bolton. Years ago, I saw a thing on TV where you did a guided tour of Sydney and <laughs> recommended a pie shop. Uh, for some reason, I can't seem to find it. Can you help? Uh, I can't, because I haven't been to that pie shop for ages, and I remember that. That was like a little bit of a, what do you call it, a, a, a piece. I can't remember exactly who was it for. Um, but uh, we went, it was down there at Woolamaloo, but I can't remember where it is. Uh, well, it's a good well we're going to have a look at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's have a look. Yeah. I'm going to take the boys to a little bit of an iconic uh, Sydney spot. It's called Harry's Famous Pies. It's been here for a very, very long time, so let's go and have a look. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Uh, so can I order uh, two steak sandwiches? <laughs> 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 oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Why not the pie? I'm not a pie eater. <laughs> Fair enough. This one, Todd and Leichhardt. Interesting question, this yeah. one. He said, I heard Matty's podcast interview with Robbie Slater mm. where he spoke about playing Maradona. What was it like to play against the great Diego? And how was the, the night out with Diego in Buenos Aires? Well, I wasn't in Buenos Aires, so I can't say, oh, but right. apparently it, it was fantastic. Uh, but playing against him was a, was a great honour, a great privilege. Um, I guess it would be exactly the same, you know, for somebody talking about playing against one of the immortals mm. uh, in, in rugby league. 
Um, you know, we played them in Sydney, and unfortunately, I was injured for the second leg. But, uh, leg, but uh, he, he wasn't at he, he wasn't he, wasn't he, the he peak wasn't of his powers then. Mm. Um, but uh, he, he was still fantastic. You saw him set up the goal there as well. So well, we won one, and then we lost one nil in, in Buenos Aires. But like I said, I didn't go to Buenos Aires. But yeah. apparently, it was it, it was fantastic. Yeah. He was. He was arguably the greatest player of all time. Yeah, well, we spoke about that before yeah. as well, because he played at a time as well where, a lot like with yours, you know, you could yeah. get away with a lot more in terms of stopping people. Those and Italian the, strikers, yeah, yeah and the pitch, and yeah. the pitches as well weren't, yeah. as, weren't as like they are today. They were they were like very mashed up. I was like, can I can I ask how, how did you make it? How did you how were how you found? I? How did you get over there? Um, I went to uh, Liverpool when I was 15 and for, uh, arranged for a trial in 1987, and uh, I had three days and everything I touched, like I was just everything went uh, really lucky, you know. And then in that interim period, from I think it was September 1987 to. July 1988, Sir Alex had a very good friend uh, here in Australia, the late Eddie Thompson, he used to oh, be the yeah. manager here. Yep. He'd heard about it, so he'd rang him up and he flew me over in, in March 88 mm. and done the two weeks there with him and he was like, you're signing for us, that's it. So July 1988, wow. uh, I was off. Yeah. Buzz, how, um, how, how, did, how did it go handling the massive fame yeah. and everything over there associated with the English Premier yeah. League, being over there for yourself? Oh, look, it, uh, Originally, it was very different in terms of um, from what we're used to, um, and especially growing up in the west of Sydney, you know, it, it was it was very, very different. But you, you try to deal with it the best as you possibly can. The most important thing, I think, was um, you, you don't want to upset anyone. The last thing you want to see is somebody turn around and said, oh, I went to ask Mark Bossage for an autograph, this, mm. that, and the other, and he said no. So you don't want to garnish that reputation whatsoever. Mm. Um, but you've also got to make sure you allow for certain times I, before the game, or if you're on official team functions and all that, to make sure that you, you make it clear to the supporters that, look, it's yeah. not on being rude, yeah. um, and I'll do the photo when I can. However, I've got to do this now, or I've got to prepare for the game, because sometimes you can get too caught up with it, yeah. and all of a sudden you're playing in the game, and you've let two through your legs in the first... You know, and, and, you know then the manager will yeah. say, hang on a minute, yeah. you know, is that because you're outside signing autographs yeah, or, gotcha. or going on the Matty John show? Yeah. You, know, you should have been concentrating on, yeah. on what you were doing on the weekend. So yeah. you've really got to find that balance, balance. And, it, and it can be very, very difficult. Matty, speaking of concentrating on what you're doing, I've actually got uh, one that came into Barney's sack of correspondence, <laughs> um, and it's from the Australian College of Optometry. It just says, Dear Bozza, yes. thank you for taking all your instructions your optometrist gives you very seriously and demonstrating that seriousness for others on live TV. Do you remember what they're talking about, Boz? Yes, I do. I do. Do you want to have a look at it? Uh, yeah, let's put it on. He <laughs> <laughs> really makes his breath here. I really do think he's got a massive op opportunity. I I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Boz, are, you, are we interrupting this for uh, no, a bit, bit of an announcement? No, no, it's <laughs> alarm on the hour every hour. If anyone watched last night, they would have seen that uh, I had a bit of infection in the eye. So on the hour every hour, I've got to take this in my eye. So I'm very, very sorry. Okay, I okay. just thought he was a one-eyed wanderer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> red and black. Oh, well, you've got to do what you've got to do, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, you've been told to do something, just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Boz, um, yes, sir. I mean, look, you're an attractive man now. Thank you. Well, but back then you yeah. were you were quite uh, quite stunning. Well, thank you. Uh, your hair. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about the different hairstyles we've had over the years. Right. Because um, I mean that that is that's probably yeah. mid nineties. Yeah. Then it got a little bit darker. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Well, well, got, uh, well got, there you go. Then it got a little bit Michael Slater like. <laughs> then it just sort of started going. <laughs> This is going forward, yeah. uh, and then all of a sudden oh, that, that nearly, that nearly came yeah. off. Um, so what I'm just trying to... Do you want me to tell you the story? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, so I, whenever that was, there you go, whenever that was when you saw with the ridiculous thing. Yeah. So I thought, you know, I'm going to go to one of these hair places. I think it was actually advanced. Well, uh, well let's not say who it was, just in case. <laughs> I thought, and I don't want to offend him. So anyway, uh, yeah, I went... Yeah, I yeah, went yeah. Wait, wait, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah right? Okay. So I went, here's me having a go at you, and now I'm like, anyway. So I went to this place, and I thought they'd just do the, you know, they take some from the back, whatever. And they said, no, 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 what we're going to do is we're going to shave this part, and we're going to put this thing on. Oh, no. and I I've gone... So it was a wig? Well, basically. Well, I don't know if that what you call it, Maddie, when they stick <laughs> yeah. it on. Yeah? Mate, and I, and I, and I, no, 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 I got you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this, what, this, <laughs> oh, this is obviously a private joke. I don't know about it. So anyway, look, 
I'll, I'll, they were like this and that. And I'm not, you, you guys know me. I'm not one to no. convince easy. But eventually, yeah. and I was paying for it. I, I didn't get it for free. Yeah. I was paying for it. I said, look, OK, <laughs> let's just give it a try. Well, as you just saw on the TV, yeah. wait, as you saw on the TV, absolute disaster. So anyway, obviously here, I spoke to the powers that be here and they just turned around and said, look, listen, you know, you can't, you can't take it off straight away. You're going to have to keep it on for 12 months. It's oh. going to look ridiculous. So I had to go oh, no. through it. You had to fade so you had it to out. see it for 12 months, and then at the end of the 12 months, it was like, oh, my God. But now, yes, El Natural. Can, can I ask you, well, so it was a toupee, I gather. Well, uh, that's and what you... Yes, I'm saying that's yeah, what you call it. they call it, it a toupee. <laughs> yeah. Did you, what about at night when you got... Did you take it off and... No! Just they left they it stick unfolded? it on, so, yeah, I know, but <laughs> Stick it on! Is it, like, sewn on? Yeah. Or no, it's glued. It's glued. Like, yeah. Well, how'd you get it off? Well, eventually, you have to, like, put the water in it, this, that and the other, like, and, and put so down, I don't know, whatever effort. you call yeah, something to get it off. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what the product was, but I got it off. Yeah, we'll ask Laurie Daly how he did. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go, honestly, honestly. Yeah. honestly. I, I like this anyway, yeah. boys, yeah. I like that. I'll now. tell you what, I'm with you, know, boss. Speaking how of, <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> speaking about my dad before, it was funny, because we had a family do, and everyone was laughing like you guys are at, and he's turned around and said, you've done some stupid things in your life, but this is right up there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Let's talk about some of those stupid things, man. <laughs> uh, no, hello to everyone with pieces out there. Uh, Join the club. Uh, <laughs> mate, just to finish with Boz, <laughs> 1997, yeah. you know, that doubleheader against uh, Iran. Right. How, is that, was that the, where, as far as disappointments are concerned, oh, biggest, is that right at the top? Biggest disappointment. Yeah. Uh, no doubt about that. There's, there's nothing like playing for your country, there's no doubt about that. And, you know, we had a wonderful opportunity to go to the World Cup and unfortunately we couldn't see it through. Mm. Um, and I felt really, really sorry uh, uh, for, for more of the older boys. Yeah. Um, you know, for the ones that basically we're, we're not going to have another opportunity. You yep. know, like, you know, say your Graham Arnolds and, and Robbie Slaters and people like that. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and, and especially felt sorry for, for Terry Venables because he yeah. was absolutely fantastic. I'm yeah. just looking for my microphone here because it just dropped out <laughs> as we were laughing. Uh, and he was, just, yeah, and he was because he was absolutely fat. Terry, that Terry, Terry, Terry Venables was actually <laughs> one of one of the one of the best coaches I played under in terms of his knowledge. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't realise that he won he won a you know La Liga title in yeah. Spain. He was one penalty kick from winning a European Cup. It was a real education playing underneath him. And, and especially sorry for the Australian football supporters that night because they... But the bottom line is, sometimes you have to go through something like that for something like 2005 to happen when they yeah. do qualify. It's a good night to fin finish up on, um, Boz. Um, tell you what we'll do, we'll just take a break. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after the break, 